In this video, I'm going to show you how to use layers in part mode in Creo Parametric 3.0 and earlier. Be aware that managing visibility changes in Creo Parametric 4.0, so it's going to be a little bit different. Why do we use layers? Well, layers are used to perform collective operations. For example, you could select by layer and then suppress by layer, but the number one use of layers is for managing visibility. Right now I have an assembly open and I have all my datums displayed and even with just a few components, the screen gets cluttered pretty quickly. But let's say I wanted to see some of my datums, uh, like some of my planes or some of my axes, not all of them. I'm not able to do that with these icons which affect all the entities. So let's hop over to a part and see how to use layers. And so to access your layers, you can do it from the view tab and there is the layers icon. And when I access my layers, they show up in their own separate window because of a configuration option I have set. If you go to file options configuration editor, there's an option called floating layer tree and I have that set to yes. If you have the default value of no, your layers are going to be accessed from the model tree. I like to have it as a free floating window because that way when I'm selecting entities I can select them right out of the model tree and have the layer tree visible at the same time. And one thing that I highly recommend that you do, again layers is on the view tab and it might be inconvenient jumping back and forth between the model tab and the view tab. This is an excellent icon to place in the quick access toolbar so you can get to it without having to switch between different tabs. And one thing I recommend is that when you set up your default templates like your start parts and your start assemblies for your different companies, uh, configure your layers to what makes sense for your users. These are the default layers that come from PTC and I don't necessarily find them to be helpful in all situations. So set them up, maybe use less cryptic names. I think the names of the default layers that come from PTC are, are one of the most confusing aspects for both new and experienced users. All right, so I have my different layers in here and some are for my default datum planes. And if I right click on it, I can choose to hide the layer and when I repaint the screen, which you can do very easily by zooming in and zooming out, those datums are no longer displayed, but you still see DTM1 because that particular layer is not one of my default datum uh, planes. So if you want to then see those layers again, we can choose to unhide the layer. And now we have right top and front back visible on the screen. Be aware that there is another layer setting that you can access if you select a layer and then go to this icon up at the top. There is a setting called isolate, which means I want to see that layer and that layer only. Just be careful using isolate, especially if you have a lot of layers. Sometimes people can be confused when they set that layer and they're like, hey, why isn't other stuff visible? And if you set something to isolate and you want to get back to the normal setting, just use the hide or unhide command in order to turn isolate off. All right. Besides using layers for hiding entities, you can also hide and unhide out of the model tree. So let me go and first show my datum planes again. And let's say that for the work that I'm doing, hey, this datum plane, I don't want to see it. So I can select it right mouse click and hold and choose hide and what you'll notice is in my layer tree I now get this hidden items layer so I can see what's been manually hidden and unhidden and if you manually hide and unhide different things well you can see that the display of it in the model tree changes a little bit so that gives you a visual indication but if you have a very complicated model with a few hundred features, it can be hard telling, hey, within this big long model tree, what's hidden, what's unhidden. So if you go to the view tab from the unhide drop down menu, there is the unhide all command, which will then make everything visible, even if they're in groups, 
in the model tree. So let's talk about creating new layers for your own use. To do that, you go to the layer tree and then you can hold down the right mouse button and you'll get a pop-up menu and you can choose new layer. And then you can call the layer whatever you want to call it. So for example, I'm going to go and call this layer holes. And then you could manually select the different entities that you want. So for example, you could say, hey, let's go and pick this hole over here and this hole over here. And I can do that. I can pick features one by one. But in a model like this, well, that could get very tedious. I mean, there aren't that many holes in here, but again, I don't want to spend all my day clicking. So instead, what I can do is I can create a layer that uses rules. Let's right click again and I'll choose new layer and again I'll call it holes and this time rather than manually picking items on the contents tab I'll go to the rules tab and first off go to the options drop down menu and basically you want to check all these different boxes in here first off check independent. Uh, so that you're saying that basically these this layer is independent of the default layer scheme and rules enabled applies to any new items that are created and whether they will be added to the layer and if you choose associative it'll pertain to existing items so basically again from the options tab rules enabled is about what you create in the future associative is about what was created in the past and usually you probably want both of those checked and then to create my rule I'll go to the edit rules button and this brings up a dialog box which is a lot like the search tool and I can choose what I'm looking for in this case I'm going to search for features and look by you know you could choose if you wanted to select it by some other different kind of entity and you can use the attributes tab to search by name of different items you can use expression based on parameter values but I'm going to use type and I want to choose holes and this is a very long list over here you can actually start just typing in the letter and it'll type ahead and that way I can get to hole pretty quickly you can click on the preview results button in this case here it found 28 different items if you go to the options drop down menu you could build a query in case you wanted to search for multiple different kinds of entities for example for simulation you might want to create a layer that contains both all the rounds and all the chamfers so you can suppress all of those quickly and easily to simplify the mesh of the model that you're going to analyze but in this case here all I want are the holes so I will click OK Oops, forgot to add that rule in here. Let's go and do that again. Add new. When you build query, you make you have to make sure that you have you hit the add new button to have it listed in there. So I'll click OK, and now my rules listed in here. Be aware that there is another tab called notes if you want to write a description for the layer, but that's not necessary. If I go back over to my contents tab, again, this is where you can add in uh, other items manually uh, that you also want included in addition to the list and so when I click OK I have my holes layer I can expand it and there you see the different holes that were added in here and you'll also notice in the layer tree that there are different symbols based on the type of layer so this little symbol here that has a sort of check marks on it that means that that is a layer that uh, has rules associated with it but if it looks sort of just like an, uh, a plane sort of at an oblique angle that means that this is a layer in which the items were added manually to it so I've got my layer created over here if I want to hide the layer I can right click on it and choose hide and then when I repaint the screen the holes are still there why does that happen well except for one particular case when you create layers and add features that add or remove mass to the part model then 
that layer is not going to have an effect on the display of those solid features. But what it does have an effect on, take a look at the holes here. I'm going to unhide it in a second. When I choose unhide and then repaint by zooming in and zooming out, you'll notice that the axes go away. So in part mode, you're primarily using layers to control the display of non-solid entities. What I mean by that are things like your datum axes, planes, points, coordinate systems, and non-solid surface features. So again, just to show you while I'm zoomed in, if I hide the layer and then repaint by zooming in, you'll notice that the datum axes associated with that layer are no longer visible. Now I mentioned that there's one exception to uh, controlling the display of features that add or remove mass from the model. You can create a layer that grabs all the solid geometry. So I will right click and choose new layer and I will call this solid geom. Let's go to the rules tab and again Easiest thing is just to check all the boxes underneath options. And now we're going to edit rules and we're going to look for, in this case here, I'm going to scroll down and find solid geometry. And then we can say history all. Since I hit the, turned on the options for build query earlier on, better make sure to add new. If I click on the preview results, there it says one item found, solid geometry. So I'll click OK, and then OK again. And now I've got my layer for the solid geometry. I can right click on it and choose hide. And then when I repaint, all I see are my datums. I don't see any of my solid geometry. So that's another layer to be aware of. If you have this layer over here, sometimes what people do is they will just hide all the layers real quickly and you're like, whoa, I don't see anything whatsoever. Well, if I want to see my solid geometry, I have to make sure that that solid geometry layer is hidden. Now, one thing to be aware of is that when you change the layer settings in your model, those will not automatically be remembered when you save the model. So for example, if I were to go to my model right now and hit the save button, in the message area, you're going to get a warning. Hey, the layer display status was not saved. If you want Creo Parametric to remember your changes to visibility the next time that you open up the model, you have to right click in the layer tree and choose save status. Be aware that you can also get that to that command from the view tab as well. For example, let me go ahead and change a layer setting over here. Now I have the status button and from here you can choose save status. Reset status will change your model back to what you had set the last time that the model was saved. So that is a quick and dirty introduction to how to use layers in part mode. In another video, I'll show you how to use layers in an assembly. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to be informed whenever new videos are added, please hit the subscribe button.